Yep, sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy another awesome video by Captain Franklin here. Please subscribe, like, and share with all your friends and all the people you hate too. Hi, I'm Captain Franklin here, a retired Coast Guard officer and SAM's accredited Marine Surveyor with over 40 years of experience in the maritime and diving industry. I've amassed literally thousands of photos of all the bad things I've found on boats during my career as a Marine Surveyor. So what we're going to do today is take a look at some of my favorites. We're going to take a look at each picture. We're going to discuss why they're evil. Evil! And we're going to discuss what you need to do to Marine. So hop in, buckle up. Keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times as we take a carnival-like ride tour through the cavalcade of owner-induced perversions that I like to call Captain Frank's Sea Chest of Horror. Sea Chest of Horror. So what we're looking at here is a shaft log hose on a older mid-sized sailboat. So the shaft log hose connects the stern tube, which is a fiberglass tube that exits through the vessel's hull to the stuffing box, which is up uh, to your left. And it is a section of rubber hose that just connects those two together. Of course, the stuffing box or shaft gland that keeps the water from uh, entering into the boat. Well, you know, hose like everything else got a limited lifespan. There's no hard and fast rule, but about, you know, 10 years of age, you want to start replacing the hoses no matter how they look, especially hoses on fittings and stuff below the water line, seacocks, shaft log hoses and stuff like that. So this shaft log hose, if you look at it closely, you'll see it's not as nice and shiny and black. Well, the reason it's nice and shiny and black is because the owner noticed that the hose was looking rotten, deteriorated, so he wrapped it with electrical tape. You know, that was his fix. Rather than, you know, pull the boat and replace the shaft log hose, we're just going to cocoon it in electrical tape and call it good. I mean, you know, bad enough, electrical tape, he weren't even rednecky enough to use actual duct tape, which I guess, you know, the electrical tape looks better. So anyway... <laughs> You know, this is what can sink your boat, right? This is what's keeping water out of your boat. This is a below the waterline fitting. So the recommendation, of course, was, uh, and by the way, when we did the sea trail on this thing, it, the, the water was just kind of pouring out of this thing at each end of the, uh, you know, the electrical tape. So the recommendation, of course, you know, is to replace the shaft log hose. And it's kind of a pain. You got to pull out the boat. You're typically going to have to disconnect the shaft from the transmission or a reduction gear and then slide it out and then you can add that new section of hose to it. And that's what we got going on here. So here we have a situation where the owner is faced with uh, doing something the right way or doing it the easy way. Uh, we're looking here, uh, these seacocks on the bottom there, the they are an older style, compression style seacock. And to operate these things, they've got a big rubber, you know, plug in there. And you have to loosen the, uh, the knob there that you can see, the T-handle knob. And you just unscrew that. And then on the other side, you have the lever for them. And you got to kind of work them, you know, closed or open, depending on what position they're in or what you're trying to do. And they they tend to, you know, be kind of a pain to, to operate. They freeze up and they're just a pain. So the owner wanted some new uh, seacocks. Well, rather than pull the old seacocks off, what he did was is he just uh, screwed the new seacocks onto the old seacocks, the threaded body of these old seacocks, right? Well, there's a couple things wrong. This doesn't meet any you know, standard known to man, and it actually probably breaks a lot of the laws of the Almighty as well. But, you know, you know, other than, you know, looking, you know, kind of crappy and, and the definitely not the way you want to do something, in, in addition to all that, one of the concerns is thread mismatch. You know, these uh, valves, they're not really actually seacocks, they're called valves because uh, they don't have this characteristics of a seacock. I'm talking about the new ones there. So he just screwed those things on there. They have a different thread uh, than, you know, what the old, you know, seacocks had. And that's the concern. You have a thread mismatch. If you have to replace a seacock, particularly an older one, typically the best way to do it is you remove the seacock and you also remove the through hole. 
and you replace both of them with new units that you know are compatible. Uh, when you do this right here, these things, uh, when you screw them on there, they're damaging the thread as you're trying to crank them down enough to keep them from leaking, right? And in fact, these were leaking no matter how much Teflon tape you put on them, they still leak and they're actually a little loose. You can wiggle them a little bit because they have different threads, the type of threads on them. So the recommendation here, of course, was, you know, make what ought to be what is, pull these old seacocks, old through holes, put new through holes and new seacocks in place. That's what should be done. Particularly if you want to keep your boat from sinking if one of these things fails. So here we got a situation where the owner wanted to run some more wires. You know, there's always wires to run. We got to power this, got to power that. And of course, what's the easiest way to pull a wire through your boat is to use the raceway or where it's been, you know, there's wires currently existing. You just follow them wires and that's the easiest way to do it. The problem here is, is that the boat builder simply just, you know, he had to run his original wires and he just drilled a hole, knocked a hole through this bulkhead and he ran his wires. Well, the owners shoved more and more wires through here and you can see at the bottom is sharp, uh, you know, fiberglass. And what it's doing is, is it's, it's a chafe point for all these wires, this bundle of wires. What the builder should have done was, you know, put grommets or chafe protection in that hole there. And then the owner, he should have either, you know, drilled another hole or added, you know, if he's gonna use this existing hole, put chafe protection around it. Cause what's gonna happen is as the boat's moving back and forth, you know, these things are gonna chafe on this fiberglass, this sharp fiberglass, and they're gonna cut through the, uh, you know, the jacket on the wires and probably, you know, arc and spark and cause a fire. And that's what the issue is here, right? So, you know, the takeaway here is, is that when you run wires, you run a, make a wire run, you know, be sure to provide chafe protection, either grommets, you know, Sometimes people put hoses around them to try to do a, you know, chafe protection. I mean like rubber hoses. But the best way to do it is to put grommets in there. That way you don't have to worry about the, uh, the issues with chafe. Sorry, it's DJ. So it's a guarantee. If you hang around boats long enough, you're going to see some stuff that, you know, it just automatically makes you think, man, I can't believe this shit. You know, what were these people thinking? when they did this. Uh, but, you know, I guess, uh, you, you know, every everything that you see that would make you say that, you know, at the time, somebody thought this was a good idea, you know? So I surveyed this sailboat and, you know, we're looking at it and I see these two, you know, these marks, repairs, they look like repairs, you know, I'm looking at it from the dock and look like repairs on the side there. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what exactly they were, other than, you know, I knew there were repairs, but they were, you know, kind of odd looking to them right beside each other like that. And uh, <laughs> I started talking to the seller, and the story I got was, is he had this thing, he was a, um, you know, he had a warehouse, and they had this thing uh, hauled and placed up by his business, by his warehouse, and he was working on it. He had to do something. He had to lift it up to do some work on the keel. And in his mind, the simplest way and easiest way to do that <laughs> was to take his forklift from the warehouse, come over there and cut him some holes and slide that thing in there and lift it up where he could get and do his work there. I mean, <laughs> this is, you know, this is what you see. You know, people, uh, you know, boat people, rednecks solving problems. And that's what we got. You know, we got a big old forklift and this boat needs me moved, and that's what we're going to do. So anyway, that's what the two holes are. They are for his forklift, and where he stuck it in there and lifted that boat up. So I guess the moral of the story here is, is uh, where there's a will, there's a way, and when stuff needs to be got done, then we're going to get it done no matter what we got to do. And so, again, you just never know what you'll see out there on them boats. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, and you want to buy Captain Frank a cup of coffee, please click on the thanks button below this video. All tips received, not spent on coffee, will be used to improve my YouTube channel and create even more awesome videos.